All right. Stay with us on this podcast because we're going to talk about how to stand out as a land investor. As more and more people go into the land investing niche, how do you stand out? Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, their favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Landon A.I. Harris, the aquatic investor. Landon, how are you? Oh, well, Mark. Good to see you. Dude, buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are things? Uh, things are good. Thanks, Mark. Good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things in Sin City? They're good. Good as usual. Staying busy. Good to see you. Well, we've got a really great topic that I think is going to be on almost everyone's mind, especially when you go and you're seeing if you're on, you know, say our uh, our mastermind calls like guys. This it seems like there's more people in in the land investing niche now. How do I stand out? How do I stand out so I can buy more property? How can I stand out from the crowd so I can sell more property? And we have a really interesting take on this, I think. But I can't read Landon's mind. So Landon. When you, what are you thinking when you see, oh my gosh, there's, it seems like there's more people in my county. There's more people in the niche. How do I stand out? What do you, yeah. what strategically are you thinking about? Well, I mean, you can look at it in two different areas, right? Um, I mean, if you're looking at it from the intake side, um, you know, in the beginning, I remember we got, uh, we were doing the, the regular letter, sending it out. And we decided we were going to change it up a little bit. And so we made some adjustments to the template and we um, added our logo um, so that we kind of stood out a little bit. You know, ultimately found out it didn't make a difference whether they got ours or not. Um, they, they, they liked the price. And that's what it really came down to. Did I have the right price? And that's honestly what made it stand out. So... When I look at it, the intake um, side of it, it was more on what price did you put? Were they ready? You know, so I think that that ultimately set out, you know, on the sales side, um, you know, we went down the road of all right, we're going to create this website and we're going to make it all jazzy and fancy and spend all this time, hours and hours and hours putting this thing together. And, you know, ultimately, did people go to our website? No, they didn't. You know, they, they it, it gave us some credibility, sure. Uh, Help some people kind of look around and say, well, yeah, you know, I can see you got some properties. But, you know, um, I think what ultimately made us stand out on the sales end was just how we interacted and how we treated people. You know, the conversations that we were having. We got to know some of these folks that were um, buying properties from us. And, you know, they, they had our number. They could call us. We responded back quickly. So... When it came to the sales, it was more on, you know, being a little bit of personal and then making sure that we were accessible. We can answer the questions that they needed. Um, so, yeah, standing out stuff, but you can do it. I think it's it doesn't have to be something fancy um, that you're trying to do to kind of make yourself stand out. So let me understand this so I completely have it clear in my head. The way that you stand out is you just offer a really good price for the land. So you're not doing like a yellow letter or a handwritten letter or or something like that, some fancy stamp for them to get to open your envelope. You just send a good offer. We just send a good offer. And then on the other end of it, you're standing out by being a good human. This is <laughs> this is mind blowing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Right. It's changing the world here. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you would love to say, OK, we'll change this and do this because I need to be the one that stands out the most. But honestly, it's just how you're treating people and you're sending out the letter that people go. That's fair. That's a price I want to pay for, or want to want to pay for or buy whatever they want to do. It's like, OK, well, I think that honestly has been just the most standard, consistent thing that we've ever done. 
So Wow. So this is the most disappointing answer for people who are looking at like the greatest <laughs> tactics ever. But I guess if, if, you know, you can just write down for your note, golden rule it. That's oh, going to no. help you stand out. Just golden rule it. Right. Yeah. But we're doing. maybe maybe Scott Bossman has some kind of black hat type of marketing strategy or some type of acquisition strategy where he's using bots and he's using AI to differentiate himself from the rest of the crowd. Scott, what do, what are you doing to differentiate yourself on the acquisition side and on the marketing side? All right, on on the acquisition side, like we're steady Eddie, man. Like we're, we're doing exactly what we've done since the beginning uh, with using a letter template, as Landon said, putting the right price on there. Right. And that, and watching responses come in. Now I will say that I do believe what stand, what sets you apart on the intake side is a timely response to those sellers, because I can't tell you how many people our intake team talk to and they'll say, I've gotten a lot of offers or I just got an offer from this guy and I was hoping, you know, and, and I talked to him one time, but he hasn't gotten back in touch with me. Well, how long ago was that? I don't know, three, four weeks ago. And he was interested. Yes. Oh, and he wanted the property. Yes. But he hasn't been in touch. No. Right. Well, now we're taking over that conversation because the day we got that response, we're on the phone. And the day we got that response, we're on the phone with them, uh, golden ruling it, like you said, making a connection with these potential sellers. So I think that's what makes you stand out on the front end of the business is uh, I, I don't think that I still don't think anything fancy needs to be done with offer letters. I mean, I, I just got one today. I got a I got a handwritten offer letter. It was all it was all crooked and it was photocopied. And but it looked like a fifth grader's writing and it said, I want to give you ten thousand dollars for this property. And really, if you think about it, like um if I got a letter from him offering ten thousand or a, a template offering ten thousand, and if I was interested in that price, I'd I'd call him. Right. Sure. So I, I see people nowadays that they're they want they're wanting to go back mark to handwritten letters because they think it's going to improve the open rate or they think it's going to connect with the person opening the envelope on that side. I haven't seen that on the intake side. We're still getting responses. I see people using companies. Have you seen these uh, letter letter writing companies that use BIC pens with their machine? Yeah, yeah to, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, really, it comes down to what Landon says, I think, on the intake side. Okay, so let me understand you correctly here. So on the acquisition side, you're just getting back to people when they respond and say, yeah, I want to sell my land. So you're golden ruling it, basically. Timely response. Timely have a conversation. Response. Have a conversation. Money is made, money's made on the phone and money's made with connections. Money's made on the phone, money's made on the connections. Um, before we get to Tate, I'll just digress and tell you guys a quick story illustrating this point. So we're doing coaching live um, for our, our current... Our, our current coaching clients and our alumni and they're going to come to Scottsdale. So we're, we're going to cater it. Right. And so I'm in a mastermind group that is a really high end mastermind group in, in Scottsdale and their caterer is fantastic. It's healthy food. It's delicious. It's really well done. So I said to the team, let's get this caterer. They are fantastic. I know everyone's going to love this food and they're really great. So team contacts them. No response. Team contacts them again. No response. I personally call and say, hey, I'm in this mastermind group. I really like the food. Can someone from catering contact me? I've had no response. I will not be using this company. Simply out of principle now. Even though I know they've got a great product because they couldn't get back to me. So it just really highlights that point. Like you might, your offer might be $20,000 might be even higher than, than ours. 
it doesn't matter if the if you don't if you don't have the system set up, your team's not set up to follow up on a timely manner. And this is what we see with newbies all the time. Like, I want to send out a thousand little offer letters. Well, great, you're not built to handle the the deal flow that comes back if you send out a thousand offer letters that month. You're still going to miss out. So, uh, I, I think it's really uh, a great point. So so far, we've got golden ruling it and golden ruling it. Tate, what's your what's your your hack as far as standing out from the crowd on the acquisition side and on the marketing side? Wow. And I'd be by the way, be risk risk Taria uh, putting the reps. Harris just jumped on. Hi Taria. I don't know, Mark. Uh... I'll be honest, I don't love this question because I feel like I can't give a good answer to it because I, I don't consider myself a naturally creative person, but what I do consider myself is stubborn. And if I figure something out that works, I'm going to continue to do that until it stops working. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. We test, we do things while we're trying to crack the code. But once we crack the code, you know, what better situation do you want? I, if there's certain areas where I can get land, I know what to pay. I know who's going to buy it. I know what language to use to target them. I know how long it's going to take. And I know what it's going to suffer. Why do I need to be creative? Why do I need to stand up? Why not just do what we've learned works and rinse and repeat. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good creative story here. I'm not writing the letters. I'm not going back in time. I'm not putting emojis in text on Facebook. I, I don't do that. I'm a grown up. I, I don't do that stuff. Okay. Well, well I'll, I'll, by the way, I'm going to answer the question. I'll tell you why. Right. Why? Because I, I look at a guy like Landon, if you guys aren't looking at Landon, he's super fit, right? Tria is also super fit. And you know what I want to do? I want to spend half the time that they're spending in the gym and I want to eat French fries and I want to eat hamburgers and I want my shakes, but I want to look like them. Right? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go online and I'm going to look for the hack. Oh, you know what? If I eat just only protein and that's it, maybe I'll look like Landon and maybe I'll have Taria's endurance and, and glowing skin. Right? Right. Uh, what do you, what do you use for your skincare, Tria? Right? Oh, she uses that lotion. It's not going to work. Right? It's a hack. The fundamentals, and there's no getting around them. Work every single time. There is no hack. You're in in the long term. Maybe you might be able to increase your open rate by a percentage, right? But that's not where we make our money. Is on an increased open rate. Um. But I digress. Go ahead, Tate. No, I think that's a good point. I mean, at the end of the day, we are not fools, right? Like we pay attention to the market when things need to be changed and altered and we need to do some testing. We do it. How do we stand out? Well, we try a variety of different things, but we never really stray that far from what's worked in the past. We might have to rebrand it a tad, change up the language. But if it worked last year, you know, it, it could work this year, right? And we have to rule it out. Now, it doesn't mean platforms won't change. It doesn't mean uh, pricing will stay the same, but I'm not overly focused and being unique. I kind of consider myself a bland land investor, right? Like just give the people the facts, provide good customer service, be a nice person, golden rule it, do what you say you're going to do and be consistent with that. Wow. Well, you know, Tria's shaking her head right now. She's like, yeah, that that's a good answer. But but maybe, you know, she's using chat GPT and putting a prompt. How can I be the most unique land investor on the planet? <laughs> Pretend you're you're Mark Podolsky and you have 23 years of land investing experience. How would you go about standing out from the crowd on the acquisition side and the marketing side and selling side of land investing? Uh, Tria, what are you doing? How do you stand out? What do you what do you think? Okay, I kind of have to agree with Tate. Um, we may try to make what we do more efficient and find different platforms, but we 
pretty much stick to the same thing. We market on whatever channels we can market on. Our ads, I don't know if they actually stand out. Um, we try to use avatars like we're taught. Um, we try and follow the recipe, but if there's a better way of following the recipe, I think that's what we will um, jump in on. But just going out and trying a bunch of new stuff. I'll talk to different people. I'll go on Fiverr every now and then and just look at different ways to market on Facebook. I'll get on phone calls with some of these people um, and just try and find different ways. But I don't say we do that on a regular basis because if it's working for us, we just keep working it. I love it. I love it. it. It's so true because if you look at other businesses, right, they're not doing anything unique. You know what they're doing? They're showing up consistently. That's And they're executing consistently. If you think about the, your favorite brands, your favorite companies, where you shop, that's all they're doing. Your favorite restaurants, right? They're consistent and they're showing up consistently. They're not open two days a week. They might be open six or seven days a week, right? They give you customer service. They treat you the way you expect to be treated. And the secret to the land investing game, I'll tell you. It's showing up consistently. That's it. It's a numbers game. That's it. You make adjustments. You measure. You don't have to get fancy. You don't have to spend a lot of money trying to be unique, trying to be creative. What you do have to do are the basics and do it consistently really well. And then just like everybody said, golden rule it. Follow up. Be there. When people raise their hand and say, I want to sell my property, be there. To buy it. When people raise their hand and say, I'm interested in your property, I want to buy it, be there to service them and help them make that a delightful process for them and do it again and again and again over a long period of time. And guess what? Your passive income now exceeds your fixed expenses. You're working because you want to, not because you have to, and you're totally free to live your best life. That's it. That's what you do. And when people look at you, they'll say, well, how, what did you do to stand out? And that's what you'll say. I just showed up every single day consistently. I trained my team to do this consistently. And I didn't build myself a job. I built myself a team with these values. This is how we conduct ourselves. This is how we treat people. And we do it again and again and again. And next thing you know, You've built yourself a land empire, and that's it. There's, there's, there's nothing anything fancier than that. And if there's something fancier than that that's working, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about our tech tools. We'll get geeky with you for sure. But the the basics continue to work. It's just a numbers game. Um, everyone's shaking their head. So I thought this was a good topic, but we are now at that point in the podcast where we want to ask Landon his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Landon, what do you got? Mm, okay. So I was in this constant search of like uh, looking for a county that would file in the counties that I work. So sometimes simple file does not file in every county. We found this out. So um, I was in the search to find something else. So I found another company. It's called uh, CSC eRecording. Um, I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, but they they do have some counties and they don't file in all of you know the counties that we want, but they do have some counties that are not quite on simple file. So um, I've been kind of investigating a little bit and they're about, I believe eight to $10 per filing. Um, and then there's a monthly or excuse me, an annual fee that they have. But I do know that they work with um, specific groups if you have a certain type of package that you want to do. So I do know they make adjustments according to that. So maybe something to look into, um, you know, for others that are looking for alternatives. To simple okay, I'm, I'm looking for now. It's CSE? Yes, C CSC. CSC, uh, mm -hmm. e-reporting. Yeah, e-reporting. Mm -hmm. 
recording yeah see, see. okay i put the uh, link in the chat yeah that that makes it easier does that work okay that yeah because i can't spell oh nothing to spell it's just three it's letters just e -recording .com. <laughs> there it is ready set oh, e record so so finally simple file has simple file has a competitor now Look a at little that. competition a, that's right yeah. yeah i love it this is a great yeah. tip of the week wow fantastic yeah. i i had a, a backup tip just in case that was kind of like oh. uh, relevant to our topic and it's morgan housel's latest book uh same as ever because if everything's going to change what are the things that don't change especially when it comes to investing and it's 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 really great uh his first book psychology of money was one of my favorites mm -hmm. i think in 2021 or i forget the year it was but Awesome. Um, yeah. It, same as ever is not as good as psychology of money, but it's still really good. And uh, I'm a big Morgan Housel fan. Landon, you killed it. No, there's no, uh, no <laughs> jot, not pro to make fun of on this one. <laughs> wow. That far did that go back? <laughs> I know. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're listening to this, you're like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Don't worry. That's, that's an old <laughs> reference. That's like a nine-year-old reference now. <laughs> Eric's That's not here to defend himself. <laughs> and Eric's not even here to defend himself. All right. Well, um, I want to thank the listeners and remind you, the only way that Landon is going to keep coming up with these crazy, great tips of the week is if you do three little favors. Follow, rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review. Support at Blanket.com. We're going to send you a free copy signed of Dirt Rich. And if you're thinking about how do I build my passive income to be above my fixed expenses, go to our sponsor today, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently. And uh, I know what you're thinking. What about the tuition? The tuition? Yeah, it ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. The landgeek.com forward slash training. Landon, are we good? We're good. Dude, buddy? Yeah, we're great. Yeah? We're good. Big Papa? All good. <clears throat> All right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let's let let freedom, freedom ring. Ring. All right. Thanks, everybody. So, uh, just so you guys know, the weather here is ridiculously good right now. Like it's 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 like embarrassingly good. I agree. Yeah, to to the point today. It's like, why are we even doing this right now? Like, shouldn't we all be outside? Beautiful. It is. Yeah. It is. It's kind of paradise like right now. I know why. So. So Tate in Vegas, I know it's beautiful. Here it's beautiful, but Scott, it's like nice in Onalaska. I'm just telling you this. I'm just saying this to Scott. So he's like, okay, we're moving. Uh, Move west. Three, three, two days ago, it was 72 degrees here. Wow. Whoa. Today it's, today it's 52, which is still. Still. I mean, it's beautiful. Hot day count versus hot day. Short weather. Shorts weather. Shorts, Shorts weather. Yeah. And, that and is the comparison, true. That is. like when, when we lived in Minnesota, it would turn 30 degrees and my kids would be like, mom, it's going to be tomorrow. Yes. So it's the comparison <laughs> of where it was. So 50 is fantastic when it's a 50 Yes, it is. Swing. Yes, it is. So I'm not jealous of you guys today. Yeah. Very and that's content. the thing is like, I, I'm, I'm very upset about like the rest of the country not <laughs> suffering. <laughs> because come summer and we're suffering, we're gonna and suffer. like it's beautiful here. Like yeah. what's like it's not. We're, it's yeah. not, we're headed to it's not Alaska. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come on, come on over. It'll be mid eighties, and we're literally beautiful. headed to Alaska in July. So, <laughs> oh, are you are you guys going to Alaska oh. in July? <laughs> yes. Nice on a, on a cruise or just a visit. A cruise. A cruise for my dad. I think that yeah. I think that would be yeah. a good podcast. Is like. What's the best way to, to, to travel? A cruise or seeing a f just a few places, a one place? Oh, Tate's already Tate's already got his 
He's already shaking his head. He's like immerse. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole because uh, I'll offend some people, but uh, <laughs> everything you can do on a cruise, you can do on land. Just, just <laughs> only reminder out there. They've got water slides on, on land. Just <laughs> yeah. same with buffets. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I think Jeez, cruising man. when you have little ones is like they entertain. Like you don't even have to come up with the entertainment on a cruise. When you got little ones, it was a game changer for us. I, I think when you have elderly parents, like I've I seen. do, it's oh, great. Yeah. It's yeah. Great. We're going. My dad's turning 80, so yeah. this is his request. Oh, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So Scott, what about you? Cruise or no cruise? Uh, I mean, we've done both. Um, the cruise, actually, we like the cruise a little more than I thought we were going to. So it wasn't bad. Um, but but myself, I would prefer going somewhere and exploring, setting up a home camp somewhere and exploring from there. Yeah, I think I think it's just just me. I'm, I'm more about immersing. Um, Tate and I were in Jamaica. We experienced what it's like to be at an all inclusive no bueno unless you're a huge drinker yeah. right like the food's not great no. at all I, i'd rather <laughs> and i feel like a cruise in some respects i mean the food's not bad don't get me wrong depends on what you what cruise line you're, you're on but it's not like you know eating at that mom and pop place where the the you know it's it's got five tables and the chef's you know there and he he's the owner and and it's like very important that whole experiences compared to you know a cruise ship serving a thousand people or more fair yeah well, we want to do greece so it's like we've got three islands we want to go to it's like how do you pick so we're going on a cruise. San santorini is beautiful i would definitely recommend Greece. Well, we're gonna santorini. hit all the cruise spots and then the one we like the best we're just gonna go back and back. stay there that that's what we did. We, we hit like Corfu. Um, there was another one. I can't even remember it because like they like blur together. Then Santorini, and then sent my parents like back to Athens, and we flew out of Athens, and then did Santorini, and it was amazing. Yeah, for the people that stay on for the bonus stuff, they're like, "Wow, this is really great travel tips." <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's too, it's, free. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're, I'm going to get that guy on. Uh, there's a guy who specializes in using credit card points. Um, Russ and Joey interviewed him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I want to interview this guy. Like, there's a whole way to do it. Uh, I know, oh, yeah. like, Billy Rogers pays his team through plastique. Is it plastique? P or mm -hmm. plastic? P L A S T I Q. So he mm -hmm. gets the points and then he plays the points game. So yeah, he's paying the three percent premium, but if you know how to play the points game, it mm. it ends up you end up winning. Um, but that's a whole other that could be a whole other podcast. I don't know. All right, well, it, it, it's too nice to keep talking. Thanks everybody. <laughs> yep. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.